Oh yeah, what's up all, all my Jaguars out there? You know who I am. Ralph Jaguar is back with another epic one. And welcome to another epic episode of Ralph's Universe The Reboot. Let's do it. Alright Jaguars, in this episode I am going to discuss the major stuff that is going on with World Wrestling Entertainment and we all know that that stands for WWE for short. Oh yeah, last Sunday the WWE had ex Extreme Pay-Per-View. That's right, it was WWE Extreme Rules. It was in the Stock Raid Center in St. Elliot in St. Louis. Yeah, that's where it was. WWE Extreme Rules. OMG. It was Extreme. Even though I was out in the field elsewhere, I came back and I got the major news. All of the chaos that went down in St. Louis. OMG. This pay-per-view was... So mother effing epic! And of course it was. What the F do you expect? This is the WWE we're talking about here. They always present pay-per-view events that are... So mother effing epic! Of course it was epic. It has to be epic. That's the only way to do things. Because anything less than the best is a felony. And you know this. The WWE and its staff also know this. Almost every single match was epic and then some. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it and let's see what the F went down. In the pre-show that kicked off, you know, WWE Extreme Rules, Cody Rhodes had to go one-on-one -on -one with the most must-see champion in the WWE, The Miz. You know, this was a real good matchup, really intense, and then some. Oh yeah, they really went at it. High flying and everything. There were a lot of close pinfalls here. And a whole lot of uh, technical moves being done. As well as holds. But as you can see right here, in the end, it was the Miz that got his hand raised in victory. No big surprise here, you know. The Miz is very talented and he has done just about all of it here in the WWE. As both a babyface and a heel. Oh man. You know I really don't like that word babyface, so 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 let me go ahead and change that. As both a good guy, you know, and a heel, the Miz was real good, you know, his character is definitely epic. And with this win right here, that the Miz has scored over the dashing Cody Rhodes, now the Miz is setting his sights on the WWE Championship. That's right. 
and there should be no big surprise about that because just just about all of the big names in the WWE should be gunning for the big world title okay that's right the big world titles and and how do I feel about this should the Miz get another shot at a WWE championship definitely because we all know that anything can and usually does happen in world wrestling entertainment now about this beef between Chris Jericho and Fandango or Fandango or, or, or however you say his name I have to say it really has been something you know for the past few weeks you know ever since Wrestlemania these two has been going at it trying to humiliate each other in every which ways shape and form in fact there was recently there was a dance contest on Raw between Chris Jericho versus Fandango and of course that ended up turning into a melee and as well as everyone knows here you know this whole thing was dating all the way back to this year's Wrestlemania well Fandango had been you know even before that you know Fandango had been attacking Chris Jericho and then interfering in Chris Jericho's stuff including his ch championship matches you know costing the Y2J big time well this well last Sunday these two decided to try to you know go ahead and finish this thing off and I gotta tell you this was really some matchup right here this match was really something Chris Jericho went one on one with, with Fandango that's right here's Y2J right here entering this, the squared circle And as usual, here is Fandango with a girl in his arm. Nothing wrong with that. And of course, Chris Jericho came in swinging, actually kicking, as you can see here. Now, right here, you see Chris Jericho got he got the walls of Jericho on Fandango but actually it was the code breaker that that helped Chris Jericho win this matchup that's right that's right uh Chris yeah at last Sunday Chris Jericho did win his matchup against Fandango Fandango, of course, is saying that, you know, it's a huge fluke. Now, this one, I have to kind of disagree with that. Oh, screw it. I have to really disagree with that. But I have to say that, you know, it is about time that, you know, Chris Jericho actually, you know, won a match. I mean, he hasn't won one for a long time. I mean, we're talking about a seasoned victor in here. And a lot of people believe that, you know, when Chris Jericho lost to Fandango at WrestleMania 29, you know, it was a fluke, and it probably was. You know what, let's just make it a definite, okay? So, Chris Jericho finally back on the winning streak. Now, is it going to stay that way? There's only one way to find out, right? Don't adjust your computer 
settings. Your eyes are not deceiving you. What you're seeing is really what you're seeing. The crowd of people in the stadium are actually holding up a sign saying, Believe in the shield. Are you effing kidding me on this? Jeez. Yes, it's, as you can tell by my reaction, this is very shocking to me too. This shield might actually have a following, you know, within the WWE universe. Damn. But it's only because of, you know, the short success that the shield have been having. So I guess now it's time for the shield to get some title shots, huh? And that is exactly what happened at last Sunday's Extreme Rules presented by the WWE. In this first ma in this first matchup right here. Well, before I say that, let me tell you. There's something I forgot to mention before this. Kofi Kingston did defeat Antonio Cesaro and became the new United States Champion. Thank God for that. We now have a U.S. Champion that we can be proud of. Well, actually, we had a U.S. Champion that we can be proud of. Because at last Sunday's WWE Mega Pay-Per-View event, Kofi Kingston had to put his U.S. title on the line against The Shield's Dean Ambrose. At the, at the beginning of the match, here's Kofi with the belt. And here comes Dean Ambrose. He's being followed by Seth Rollins and, and Roman Reigns. Surprisingly enough, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins are staying within the crowd and not accompanying, not accompanying, you know, Dean Ambrose to the ring. Well, look at that. We might be, we might actually be able to tell which Shield match member is which. All right, now here's Dean Ambrose right here. He's locking it up with Kofi and actually holding his hold against him. Look at that, look at that trouble in paradise right there. Kofi Kingston nails Dean Ambrose with it, knocking the guy off the apron. Unfortunately, Dean Ambrose is retaliating back with a move of his own. And after driving the guy's head into the, the mat, Dean Ambrose is now the new United States champion. That's right, Dean Ambrose defeated Kofi Kingston, thus becoming the new U.S. Champion. Damn! But it didn't stop there, Jaguars. The Shield would go on to win another you no know, championship in the WWE. Team Hell No, Daniel Bryan and Kane had to had to put their tag team championship belts on the line against SHIELD members Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. Another epic matchup as you see Seth and Roman coming into the ring. Yeah, it was very intense. There's Kane with a move right here. The drop kick. Yeah, Roman Reigns has a lot of strength. But we already knew that. And that is what led this to happen. That's right. The Shield members, 
Sephiroth and Roman Reigns were able to defeat Team Hell No and become the new WWE Tag Team Champions. Hot damn. And then that is when Dean Ambrose came back into the ring to join his fellow SHIELD members as they raised their hand in victory and now they got gold can you believe this SHIT these former NXT competitors come up in here form a team of the SHIELD and now look at them they got belts around their waist I said it before and I said it again the shield is good these guys are real real good the in-ring performance of the shield is amazing but I really feel like it's a lucky streak that the shield is on and, and on last Sunday extreme rules we saw that luck tenfold And now, after all those wave of victories that the Shield had been getting, and now they got belts. Dean Ambrose is the United States Champion, and then Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins are the WWE Tag Team Champions. But you know what? I have a strong feeling that this is not going to last very long. Not long at all. Because Kane and Daniel Bryan are my boys. They're going to win those, belt, those belts back. They have to win those belts back. And Kofi needs to get his belt back too. What you're seeing here is not going to last long, Jaguars. Now let's talk about the strap match. Mark Henry versus the Celtic warrior Sheamus. You know these two, these two have been beefing for the past few weeks. At, at, at last Sunday's uh, pay-per-view event, it was time for Mark Henry and this guy right here, the, the Celtic warrior Sheamus. To go one on one in a strap match. I said in a previous episode that I'm not really that I'm not really a big fan of strap matches. Very few, you know, wrestlers in the past have been able to pull them off. And at last Sunday's pay-per-view event, it appears that these two warriors right here were able to pull it off. Yeah, this was a very good strap match here. In fact, I think it was so mother effing epic. Yeah, this thing, you know, got real brutal real fast. Because like I said before, you know, the rules was that in order for a combatant to win this contest, you know, he had to hit each each of the four turnbuckles in succession without getting nailed. Now, could this match have gone either way? I don't know. But everyone in this stadium in St. Louis was really, you know, getting behind the Celtic Warrior. Yeah, this, this, this thing was not easy at all. Because if someone was going to win this matchup, you know, they would have to work for it and earn this one. But that much is pretty obvious, isn't it, Jaguars? But Seamus was able to do it. It was hard, but the Celtic Warrior did it. Seamus touched all four turnbuckles in succession. 
and ended and ended up winning this contest. Because Sheamus did get hurt, you know, his back is all, you know, messed up because Bark Henry kept, you know, hitting him in the back with the strap. But it was worth it because in the end, the Celtic warrior Sheamus won this strap match. Oh yeah. Okay, in an I Quit match to determine the number one contendership for the World Heavyweight Championship, which is being held by Dolph Ziggler, it had to be Alberto Del Rio going up against Jack Swagger. Now, I know that I've missed a few episodes of WWE, Raw, and maybe SmackDown. But I just don't know how this happened because in the previous episode of Ralph's University Reboot, I did report that this was supposed to be a triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. But then something happened, you know, maybe it was changed at the last minute. Because now in a pay-per-view event, that's right, in a pay-per-view event, they had a match to determine the number one contender for a world title. Alberto Del Rio going up against Jack Swagger. <sighs> Don't know about that one. I mean, this is a major pay-per-view event, you know. Title should be on the line and, you know, number one contenders should have already been determined. That and Dolph Ziggler gets the night off. And yet, John Cena has to defend his title not to mention he's got to put his belt on the line and try to defend it while not being a hundred percent you know going up against a monster machine like Ryback Chris Jericho gets the night off but John Cena has to defend his title you know that ain't right but anyways, this match right here, Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger to determine who would get the title shot at, you know, at Dolph Ziggler. I heard this was a real good matchup right here, but it was Alberto Del Rio that ended up winning this match. And then that is when Zeb Coulter had to start running his mouth again, screaming conspiracy and justice and bloody murder oh jeez he says that there is a conspiracy against Jack Swagger but the only conspiracy I see here or should I say here is Zeb Coulter's mouth <laughs> I mean, once again, Zeb Coulter's mouth just illegally crossed the border. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. But anyways, now that De Alberto Del Rio has, has defeated Jack Swagger and is the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, it's time for Alberto Del Rio to get that shot. And now that Alberto Del Rio is a good guy, I would like for Alberto Del Rio to get the belt and represent, you know, this company well. Well, SmackDown to be more specifically. So let's go ahead and get that thing signed. There's no need to prolong it, Jaguars. Remember weeks ago when the Big Show just brutalized Randy Orton on Raw? Well, as you can see right here, at last Sunday's pay-per-view event, Extreme Rules, the Apex Predator, Randy Orton, got himself some sweet revenge. Oh yeah. 
And this match right here was Extreme Rules, which basically means anything goes. And that worked very well for our Viper and, Ex and Apex Predator. This was definitely a brutal matchup. And that's only putting it mildly, people. It was long and hard, but Randy Orton actually got his payback by giving the Big Show a big RKO right on the chair. Now that's epic, Jaguars. You know, ever since I've been watching wrestling, I have seen and, and witnessed a lot of steel cage matches. And they were all brutal, high intense, and really epic. On, at last Sunday, it was a steel cage match that would have Brock Lesnar battling Triple H inside. And this match really was something. Because Triple H and Brock Lesnar, you know, they have been feuding and beefing with each other for quite some time now. And a lot of people was really hoping that Triple H would win this match. Since he is an expert in steel cage matches. That's right. Inside, this steel, inside the confines of this steel cage. Here are our two gladiators. Going at it. For supremacy. And of course, look at them. Paul Heyman, that's right, on behalf of Brock Lesnar, that weasel Paul Heyman actually interfered in the match constantly and constantly. And that's really not effing fair, Jaguars. Not effing fair at all, jeez. That, that little weasel right there, man. Triple H using the chair on Brock Lesnar. And now here's Brock Lesnar turning the tables on him. Or should, or should I say turning the chairs on him. <laughs> And because of his outside interference, look at what happens to Paul Heyman. That's right. The weasel got pedigreed. That's right. Triple H put the pedigree on Paul Heyman. Ah, we're getting a little tired of this guy always interfering in matches. Jeez. But look at Brock over there. He's got Triple H's sledgehammer. And, and he did use it on Triple H. And, and that is why Brock Lesnar actually won the heavyweight champion. That is why Brock Lesnar actually won the match over Triple H. Now is this rivalry over between Triple H and the big bad boogeyman Brock Lesnar? <sighs> I really don't know Jaguars. But it really kind of blows my mind that Triple H wasn't able to win this match. Because I really feel, you know, the game should have. Alright. And then it was time for the main event of last Sunday's Extreme Rules. This is a last man standing match for the WWE Championship, which is being defended by John Cena. And John Cena is putting his belt on the line against this man. But he's not really a man, is he? The monster, the machine Ryback, 
seems to be unstoppable. And here's John Cena. He will never give up. Belt on the line. So let's do it. John Cena going up against Ryback. Doing a lot of high powered moves there. Now, as I've mentioned before, you know, John Cena is not really 100%. I mean, his ankle right there, still hurting, had to be taped up. But, but it, didn't re it did not really make a factor in this matter. As you can see here, you know, John Cena went ahead and put right back through a table. And right back retaliated back by Neil and John Cena with a neck breaker. Now keep in mind, Jaguars, this is, you know, extreme rules. Yeah, this is a last man standing match. And these guys are really putting, taking all the tricks out of the hat and just emptying it. Right back, fighting back with a spear. What? You didn't think that this match right here would spill to the outside? It's a John Cena match. What the F do you expect, huh? Of course it's going to go all over the place. These two gladiators right here are really, really taking it to each other and they're trying to rip each other apart with anything that they can get their hands on. Huh. Check this out. Here's John Cena spraying Brock Lesnar with a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. And here's where the ending came right here. Well, the ending for this match. Well, no. Okay, okay look, let, let's just talk about it here. As you can see, here's Ryback. He's got John Cena up. And he is smashing John Cena through the wall. And because of that, both guys were laid out and taken to the hospital. That's right, they're being taken to the hospital whether they like it or not. And I'm afraid this is how the WWE Championship is being ended. Now what's going to happen on the following WWE Monday Night Raw? I don't know. Or should I say what did happen on WWE Monday Night Raw? Now this match between John Cena and versus Ryback, you know, it's really epic. It's really so mother effing epic. Yeah, this is real stuff right here, folks. Not to mention very, very deep. Kids, do not try this at home. Oh, come on, you've seen the commercials. You know what's up. Don't try any of this at home.
So there you have it, Jaguars. Last Sunday's WWE Extreme Rules was very, very epic. Didn't have the ending that we all expected, but hey, this is World Wrestling Entertainment, right? You know how things go here. I still consider this to be an epic, you know, pay-per-view event. And the match between John Cena versus Ryback it had to end to it had to end in a no contest, which means John Cena is still the WWE champion. So for now, that is how this match is going to end. But I say that Ryback and John Cena need to go ahead and do it again so that we so that they can finally finish this matter. And of course, the WWE title will be on the line. You know, and you know damn well that the feud between Ryback and John Cena is not over. We haven't heard the last from this. But all in all, you know, this pay-per-view event right here, Extreme Rules, was very extreme, and not to mention... So mother effing epic! I'm a very big wrestling fan, you all know that. So I'm going to continue to watch WWE Raw and see what else is going down. I have a feeling that things are just heating up and they're about to get real epic. Peace out. Till the next episode. Oh!